Troopers, Commander, I saw Bear here. I've got a fresh batch of new intel. Be sure to review this information before we go on the next operation. This is update 0.20 for Foxhole, dubbed the Foundation of War. The first change you'll notice is the new dynamic camera system. When you're aiming further away from you, the camera will zoom out, giving you a wider field of view and helps keep you from getting tunnel vision when you're aiming down sights. Next up, be sure to study your maps, as we've seen many changes over the geography and layout of the towns in this region. There's been a complete design and visual overhaul of the entire world. The three major urban areas on this continent are the Jade Cove, Abandoned Ward, and Saltbrook Channel. These will be hotly contested over, so make sure you prepare for urban warfare when you get into these regions. Alongside that, we have new garrison building types. There's plenty of house variations out there, but you can also take over coal plants, windmills, train stations, and more. When war breaks out, and it will, garrison buildings will start as built structures that are neutral. In order to claim garrison buildings and build them up, we need to first claim the town hall in addition to researching the technology for garrison buildings. You'll also notice on garrison structures, the flags indicating that this belongs to wardens or colonials are located at the windowsills. They can be tough to see at certain angles, so be sure to double check. Once constructed, garrison building AI windows can be mounted manually by standing in the area below them marked with an X on the interior of the structure. Once a garrison house is destroyed, the building will now leave behind a husk that can be used for high ground and general cover. There's an additional type of garrison. The Mortar Emplacement House is a house that has a fixed mortar on the top of it. This roof-mounted mortar is ideal for defenses of cities. But, if taken over, it can also act as a decent support weapon for ongoing assaults into urban areas. This house-mounted mortar uses the regular mortar shells. If you're keen on adding to the urban architecture, try using the new sandbag walls. These can be upgraded from regular sandbag barriers. These sandbag walls are taller than a soldier, but a little trick. If you place a sandbag barrier behind the sandbag wall, you can actually use it as a parapet and shoot over top. Perfect for holding the road from enemy infantry. However, if there's enemy vehicles, you probably not want to stand right behind it. Lastly, in regards to urban settings, we now have access to a structure known as the safe house. These safe houses are few in number, but ever so important. They are special garrisoned houses in town that act as support bases in case of a siege. These safe houses offer three different types of facilities. An operating post, which provides a spawn point and a base connection for AI structures. A radio station, which provides map intelligence in the surrounding areas and an artillery shelter, meaning that this structure, once upgraded with an artillery shelter, can only be destroyed from the inside, forcing your enemies into the city rather than sitting outside and shelling it till there's nothing left. The engineers have given us the green light to utilize our newest vehicle, the Battle Tank. The Battle Tank is the heaviest armor class in the game. It has a crew of five, can take a beating, and can definitely lay on a beating of its own. The crew members are the driver, the machine gunner, the turret gunner, the engineer, and the commander. The driver's job is pretty straightforward. They will steer the tank and drive it backwards and forwards. The machine gunner operates the forward-facing machine gun in the tank. Great for taking out infantry, but it won't be able to attack anything to the tank's sides or rear. The turret gunner. The turret gunner points the main gun in whatever direction they need to, and they can fire loaded rounds. However, it is not the main gunner's job to reload rounds. That falls to the engineer. The engineer is responsible for both repairing the tank from the inside, reloading the tank once it fires, and switching ammo types should the commander feel the need to. More on this later. And lastly, the commander. The commander sits at the top of the tank. He can take cover inside of the tank or leave himself exposed for better visibility. Generally, it is the tank commander's job to unify the crew and make them fight as a cohesive machine. Now, I did mention ammo types for the tanks. In fact, both tanks will have access to these ammo types. Just make sure you're producing the right size shell for the right tank. These new ammunition types can be produced at the Advanced Ammunition Factory. It is a unique building that specializes in producing situation-specific ammunition for tanks. These new ammunition types are the standard 40 or 75 millimeter shells, 
These are the ones we've been using previously. The 40 or 75 millimeter shrapnel shells, anti-personnel shells that shatter into large number of deadly projectiles. Think of it as a tank shotgun, if you will. The 40 or 75 millimeter armor piercing rounds, which are designed to penetrate heavy armor. And the 40 or 75 millimeter high explosive shells. These anti-structure shells detonate in a high yield explosive charge on impact, perfect for taking out structures and other defenses. The Advanced Ammunition Factory can also produce one other item. Have, have we been cleared to announce this? All right, troopers, one final announcement. This could be the key to ending this entire war. Listen in. That's correct. Our scientists at the research and development departments have given us the tool to possibly end this war. The ballistic rocket. The ballistic rocket is made up of various technologies and many components. So, let's start from the basics. In order to construct a ballistic rocket, we must first secure launch sites, appropriate launch sites across the regions. Once these launch sites are secure, then we need to gather some materials. From the advanced ammunitions factory, we'll need a warhead. And from a standard factory, we're going to need rocket boosters. We're also going to need an additional five upgrade parts at the launch site and some fuel to boot. Once we have all of these items secure at the launch site, to launch a rocket within the region that you are currently in, you'll need 720 refined fuel in order to launch it, or double that for interregional launching, so 1,440 refined fuel to launch to adjacent regions. Fueling will also take quite a long time. The time it takes to fuel a rocket to launch within its own region is 12 hours, and to launch to other regions is 24 hours. It's important to note that the rockets also have a lifetime, roughly three days. If the rocket stays up for longer than three days, it will be dismantled. We can't let this technology fall into enemy hands, so it's best to use it at once. After all these different elements are completed, there's still a long procedure in order to actually fire the rocket. Rockets can only be targeted at towns or areas of importance. They cannot be launched into the ocean, and they cannot be launched onto blank ground. We'll need one soldier to move up ahead and scout out a location for impact. They'll need a radio backpack. Binoculars will help, but they're not necessary. Once the soldier gets into position, they must crouch and press the H key. After 10 seconds, they will start transmitting coordinates for the ballistic rocket. This soldier must then stay in his position for approximately 10 minutes so that the coordinates are as accurate as possible. If this soldier stops sending coordinates or is otherwise killed, then the launch sequence will be aborted. Once this time-consuming process is complete, we'll need three other officers at the launch site to confirm the coordinate code. Once the coordinate code has been confirmed, the rocket will start its ignition sequence, which takes roughly 10 minutes. Now it's hard to keep an entire rocket hidden from the enemy. Once the launch sequence starts, alarm systems and sirens in a town that is designated to be hit by a rocket will start to go off, giving people minutes to evacuate if they are within the radius. Once the rocket hits its intended target, our scientists estimate that a radius of 80 meters will be obliterated by the rocket. Town halls, fortifications, vehicles, people, whatever's in that radius will be destroyed. In fact, the destruction is so complete, we might even have to change our objectives around and avoid areas entirely, depending on what exactly gets hit. Once the launch site fires its rocket, it will then no longer be usable, so choose your targets carefully. Another few changes include Forts no longer contain garrison supplies. Field artillery damage mitigation against small explosives has increased by 13% to make it more consistent with our lightly armored vehicles such as half-tracks and armored cars. The radio backpack cost has increased from 110 to 150 to reflect its new functionality. Additionally for the radio backpack, it will now automatically spot targets around the soldier carrying it, much like the light utility vehicle. Light tanks no longer have a critical spot, although locational damage, such as hitting a tank at the side and the rear, will still do additional damage. Additional forts have been spotted along the main conquest regions, along the vertical borders. Mortar shells no longer require technology to unlock. 
gun turret health has been increased by 100%. Gun turret armor now has high mitigation against all damage types, including armor piercing and high explosives. Sticky bomb damage has been increased by 25%, and the sticky bomb now deals anti-tank damage. So half tracks, light tanks, armored cars, and battle tanks will now no longer have armor mitigation versus sticky bombs. Garrison house tech parts has decreased from 1,000 down to 600. Tank trap tech parts has increased from 150 to 450. Tank traps, garrison houses, metal walls, and binoculars have all been rearranged in the tech tree. And lastly, anti-tank mines have been removed altogether. Some minor changes include visuals for indicating the state of an AI-controlled structure have changed. When all regions are queued, low population contested regions will be highlighted. And War API has added new APIs for casualties and total enlistments. There were some bug fixes along with this update, but I'll save that for the patch notes down below. If you like this update, like and subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest Foxhole updates. And as always, good luck, keep your heads down, and stay in your Foxholes. Bear out. That, act, that looked pretty cool. Alright guys.